welcome and Chag Sukkot Sameach uh, is one of the greetings that we use at this time. Sometimes we just shorten it to Chag Sameach uh, so we can say that together. Chag Sameach. Uh, Chag means feast, Sameach means happy, so uh, it's wishing you a happy feast as, th as this uh, Sukkot the Feast of Tabernacles is the final feast uh, in the um, annual cycle of the festivals. Uh, we welcome you to Adon Alum Messianic Congregation and our Congregational Sukkah. My name is Todd Lesser. I'll be leading the service this evening and I'll be uh, assisted by Neil Bowling uh, in leading the service as well as uh, Fred Scott who will be our cantor for this evening. In ancient times, when the fruits of the field were gathered in, our people made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to give thanks for life and its blessings. We too have come as pilgrims to our congregational sukkah to praise and thank God for the goodness of life and for the covering of our Messiah Yeshua's love and forgiveness. We rejoice that the eternal God has come to tabernacle with us as Yeshua dwells in our hearts. As we begin our service, I would like to call up Janiel Scott to usher in the holiday with the lighting of the holiday candles. Mm -hmm. Didn't look that. No, sorry. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your word and given us Yeshua, our Messiah, and commanded us to be a light to the world. Amen. Chag Sukkot Sameach. Thank you, Janiel. And now I'm going to say the blessing for dwelling in the sukkah. I'll say it in Hebrew, and then we can recite the English translation together. Baruch Tadanai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvot Tav, Mitzivanu L'Shev Basukah. Amen. Together. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to dwell in a booth. Amen. Now I'm going to call up our cantor, Fred Scott, uh, and he will be chanting the Shehekianu blessing, and then once again we will recite the English translation together. Shehekianu v'kiyamanu v'hiyanu l'azman hazeh. Amen. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and sustained us and enabled us to reach this season. Amen. Now I will ask everyone to please stand as we will <coughs> be chanting the Shema a prayer that is based on Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 and in this prayer as a community we affirm the oneness the uniqueness of our God Yeshua referred to the first line of the Shema as the greatest commandment we'll chant the prayer in Hebrew and then recite the English translation for the Shema Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai He 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his glorious name, whose kingdom is forever and ever. Now please join me as we open this service in prayer. Eloheinu velehavoteinu, Elohe v'raham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov. Our God and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to gather together, Lord, on this uh, special time that you have established, Lord, not only to meet with your people, but to teach us your eternal truths, uh, Lord, as we uh, just thank you for this opportunity to dwell in booths as we uh, realize it is connected to events in the past uh, as well, perhaps, as to events in the future. And Lord, uh, we just uh, thank you for this opportunity. We ask you to um, speak to the hearts of our Jewish people who are observing this festival in any way. Lord, that they would uh, be able to see in your uh, provision for our people in the wilderness uh, Lord, that you always provide, and that you have provided a way of uh, forgiveness for our sins. Uh, even though the tabernacle and the temple no longer exist, uh, you provided your son, Messiah Yeshua, Thank as you, the way of reconciliation, the way of restoration. Lord, not only do we have forgiveness for our sins, but we have a restored relationship with the creator of the universe. And Lord, we uh, thank you that... Um, it, not only have you uh, blessed us in that way, but Lord, you have blessed us in so many other ways throughout this year. Uh, and as we uh, reflect on, on the blessings, Lord, uh, we, we seek a sweet year ahead. We seek a blessed year ahead, Lord. And we desire to live according to your purposes in accordance with your will uh, for your glory. We seek your anointing on this service, on the worship and praise uh, on the uh, sharing that we will do about the festival, uh, the liturgy, the prayers that we will say, uh, and the time of fellowship, Lord, as we uh, obey your instruction to dwell in the sukkah at this time. Lord, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise as we look forward to all that you're going to do. And I pray, Lord, that each one here uh, would sense a greater awareness of your presence through our uh, dwelling in this temporary shelter that you uh, have instructed us to build and as we remember Lord your love your provision your grace your mercy uh, Lord and uh, that even as we may be in a time of struggling in the wilderness uh, Lord you say that you will bring us into the land of promise okay. and we just ask all of these things in our Messiah Yeshua's name Amen, Amen. you may be seated and now I'm going to call up Liz Klingensmith to bring our bring us our announcements for this week. Chag Sakot Sameach. Happy Feast of Tabernacles, y'all, and welcome to Adon Alam Messianic Congregation. If you are a first time visitor this evening, please raise your hand so that we might recognize you. All right. We are blessed to have you with us this evening. One week from today, on Sunday, October 16th, starting at 3 p.m., we will have our annual congregational picnic. We will have activities such as teachings and times of fellowship. Then we will fire up the grill for supper. Please bring a main dish to grill for your family and a side dish to share. After the picnic, at 7.30 p.m., we will have our Shemeni at Seret, Simchat Torah celebration in the sanctuary. We also want to let you know that we have calendars available in our gift shop for the upcoming year for $10. We pray the Lord's blessing upon you and hope that you will feel His sweet spirit as you worship with us. Once again, Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. Thank you, Liz. <coughs> All right. We uh, <coughs> made an announcement over and over to make sure that you dress warm tonight because we know from previous experience uh, that clapping our hands and huddling over the uh, holiday candles don't always get it done. <clears throat> I thought earlier that we weren't going to need the jackets and the gloves, but I was wrong. Okay. <clears throat> 
Now we're going to recite together the Ahavat Olam with everlasting love together. With everlasting love, you have loved the house of Israel, teaching us your Torah and precepts, your statutes and judgments. Therefore, O Lord our God, when we lie down and when we get up, we will meditate on your instructions and rejoice forever in the words of your Torah and in its teachings, for they are our life and sustenance. We will meditate upon them day and night. May your love never leave us. Blessed are you, O Lord, who loves your people Israel. Amen. Now I'm going to ask uh, Neil Bowling to come up and uh, also ask you to please stand as we are going to read Psalm 15 responsibly. Please stand and join me in responsive reading of Psalm 15. <clears throat> Lord, who shall sojourn in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell upon thy holy mountain? He, he that, that walks so uprightly and, and works righteousness, righteousness and speaks his truth in his heart, that has no slander upon his tongue, nor does evil to his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor. In whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors them that fear the Lord, he that swears to his own work and changes not. He that puts not out his money on interest, nor takes a bribe against the innocent. He that does these things shall never be moved. In Leviticus 23 we read, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of the seventh month is the Feast of Tabernacles, for seven days unto the Lord, on the first day, shall be a holy convocation. Ye shall do no manner of servile work. Seven days ye shall bring an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. And ye shall bring an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a day of solemn assembly. Ye shall do no manner of servile work. These are the appointed seasons of the Lord which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to bring an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meal offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, each on its own day, besides the Sabbaths of the Lord and besides your gifts, and besides all your vows and besides all your freewill offerings, which ye give unto the Lord. <coughs> Howbeit on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruits of the land, Ye shall keep the feast of the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a solemn rest, and on the eighth day shall be a solemn rest. And ye shall take you on the first day of the fruit of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days, and ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It is a statute forever in your generations. You shall keep it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are homeborn in Israel shall dwell in booths, that your generation may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. In Zechariah 14, 16 through 19, and Revelation 21, 3, the prophet Zechariah spoke of a time when all nations will celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations that came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whosoever of the families of the earth goes not up unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, upon them there shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up, and come not and come not they shall have no overflow there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the nations that go not up to keep the feast of tabernacles this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that go not up to keep the feast of tabernacles Yeshua's disciple John speaking of the time when the new Jerusalem shall come down from heaven said and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, 
and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. You may be seated. This is referred to as the lulav, uh, which is a Hebrew word that means um, the date palm. And the lulav actually consists of uh, myrtle and willow and a palm uh, with the palm, a palm weave holding it all together. The blessing over the lulav. Baruch atadonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kedushanu b'mitzvah tav Vitzivanu al Natilat Lulav. Amen. Which means, Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us by thy commandment and is hallowed in the waving of the Lulav. Amen. Now, one of the other things about the Lulav is these particular branches are the branches that we find uh, in the scriptures we're instructed uh, to use in our sukkah. Now we are going to have a responsive reading regarding the lulav. Together. Into this tabernacle we have brought the symbols of Sukkot, the palm that resembles the spine. May we stand up for justice and righteousness. The, myrtles whose, the myrtle whose leaves are the shape of eyes. May we see the world as God sees it. The willow, <clears throat> whose leaves are shaped like human lips. May we utter praises to God and blessings to others. The etrog, shaped like the human heart. May we reflect God's love as we move from selfishness to service. O God of Israel, with palm, myrtle, willow, and etrog, with spine, eyes, lips, and heart, we, we praise, praise you, you on this festival of Sukkot. Sukkot. Please stand and join me as we read responsively selected verses from the Hallel. Actually, I'm going to have Neil come up and read the respective verses from the Hello. Psalms 113 to 118. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, which turned the rock into a standing water and the flint into a fountain of waters. He that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them and fear the Lord, both small and great. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Oh, praise, praise the Lord, Lord all ye nations. nations. Praise, praise him, all ye people. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endures forever. Open, Open to me the gates of righteousness. righteousness. I will go into them, them and, I and I will praise the Lord. Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. Thou, Thou art my God, God and, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, and I will exalt thee. thee. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. You may be seen. One of the themes of Sukkot is the Hoshanot or Hosannas. Hoshia Na is Hebrew for save us we plead. 
The Hoshanot are special prayers, entreating God to bring deliverance to his people Israel and thanking him for providing us the gift of salvation. Hoshia na, save us, we beseech thee. For thy sake, our God, do thou save us. For thy sake, our Creator, O save us. For thy sake, our Redeemer, O save us. For thy sake, O thou who seeks us, save us, we beseech thee. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Nourish and sustain them forever. And may our words of supplication be nigh unto the Lord our God, day and night, that he shall maintain the cause of his servants and the cause of his people Israel, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord, he is God, and in the heavens above and on the earth beneath there is none else. You provide salvation through Messiah Yeshua alone. As he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I thank you, my Creator, for the blessed gift of my salvation. Well, I don't have to tell you that we face uh, challenges in, in these difficult times that we are living in. But God's eternal truths have not changed. And the more we focus on them, the more we will be able to see the challenges we face today as opportunities to trust in the Lord in a greater way, to understand more how to apply eternal truths in our lives today. On the other hand, we can easily allow our current circumstances to overwhelm our ability to see things from an eternal perspective. We can all too easily forget that the Lord continues to work in our lives and that He remains faithful to His promises to our Jewish people and to us. Tonight we will explore the many aspects of the festival of Sukkot so that we can more fully understand what the Lord would reveal to us through our celebration of the seventh of the special times that the Lord has established throughout the year to meet with His people what I often refer to as His divine appointments. We find these appointed times. The Hebrew for appointed times is Moedim. Uh, <clears throat> there is... Uh, uh, okay, that's good. Um, there's one place where we find the instructions for all of the Moedim, and that is one of our favorite chapters in the Torah. Leviticus chapter 23. In Leviticus 23 verse 2 we read, Tell the people of Israel, the Moadei Adonai, the designated times of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as holy convocations, are Moadei, my designated times. The chapter goes on to give instructions for these divine appointments. The weekly Sabbath at first, and then the seven annual appointed times. Though the Lord says these are His times, there is much to do on the people's part as well. And I believe it's appropriate to seek an understanding of how these times apply to us as Messianic Jews and Messianic Gentiles today. And we might be surprised to find out that we can learn much from instructions that were given to God's ancient people primarily associated with the harvesting of their crops. We will find that we can apply uh, these truths to our lives even though we are living in a high-tech world with no tabernacle or temple altar in existence today. Now, some people today understand these times merely through reading about how they were observed by the Israelites long ago. But we also have the option to seek God's truths for our lives by living them out, by dwelling in the sukkah. First of all, we have to build the sukkah. Uh, and I want to thank everyone who had a part in building our sukkah. I refer to them as Mick and the sukkah builders. Uh, <clears throat> kind of like uh, Tommy James and the Shondells. Um, 
Buddy Holly and the Crickets. Uh, I could come up with something more recent, but anyway, you get the idea. So um, what we are really seeking to do is to ga gain a greater awareness of all that is uh, revealed through our uh, observance, through living it out rather than just reading about it. So let us just go to the Lord in prayer. Avinu Makenu, our Father, our King, Lord, we uh, are blessed to be able to uh, not only dwell in the sukkah, Lord, but to uh, desire to understand in a greater way why you gave these instructions to your people, knowing uh, that we would initially dwell in booths in the wilderness, but that we would eventually come to the land of promise, and yet you still said we are to dwell in booths generation after uh, generation no matter where we are living and so Lord we just uh, are seeking truth uh, that you would reveal to us tonight that you would draw us closer to you uh, Lord that we would just sense your presence in an even greater way uh, as we are here outside uh, in this temporary shelter where we can look up and we can see the stars maybe even the moon uh, Lord but um, most of all when we look up Lord we realize that you were watching over us and we just ask you to bless right now i ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight my rock and my redeemer i ask it in yeshua's name amen <coughs> uh okay so we may have mentioned this a time or two but we'll just see if you've been paying attention uh does anybody know the current date on the hebrew calendar the 15th day of Tishrei, the seventh month, um, which started at sundown this evening, uh, as uh, on the Hebrew calendar, the days start uh, at sundown and go until sundown the next day. And according to uh, Vayikra Leviticus tw chapter 23, verse 34, it says that this is the day that we are to begin our seven day observance of Chag Hasakot the Feast of Tabernacles. Shemot, Exodus 23, verse 16, calls this holiday Hag, well, I didn't say that right, Chag Ha'asif, <clears throat> the Feast of Ingathering, because one of the important things about this festival is its associated offerings. The Israelites were to bring part of their final harvest to the Lord in a way of thanking Him for His provision throughout the year. Our Jewish people also call this time Zaman Simkatenu, the season of our rejoicing. And this comes from Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 13 through 15, uh, which say, You are to keep the festival of Sukkot for seven days after you have gathered the produce of your threshing floor and wine press. Rejoice at your festival, you, your son, your daughter, your servant, the Levite, the sojourner, the orphan, and the widow within your gates. Seven days you are to keep the festival for the Lord your God in the place the Lord will choose, because the Lord your God will bless you in all your crops and in all your work, so you shall surely rejoice. I just, oh yeah. As usual, that translation uh, is the... Um, I, I think most of these I've attempted to use the translation from the Jewish Bible I had growing up. And uh, the Hebrew word ger, sojourner, uh, there is, as I would argue, mistranslated as stranger. Because uh, just like the orphan was a part of the community that the people were to take care of, the widow uh, and also the, the sojourner, all living as part of the community. Leviticus by Yikra 23 verses 42 and 43 gives us another purpose for this holiday. These verses say, You are to dwell in Sukkot, in booths, for seven days. All that, have na that are native born in Israel are to live in a booth, so that generation after generation will know that I caused the children of Israel to live in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Now, uh, our Jewish people, uh, the observant ones, uh, will consider it necessary to take at least one meal on each day of Sukkot uh, 
uh, as our way of dwelling in booths during the, the seven days. Those who need a technicality that say, you know, I'm not sure outdoor life is for me, uh, can always say, I'm not native born in Israel. But there are so many truths associated with this observance uh, that we miss out on, and certainly um, I, I think that uh, it's been a tremendous blessing to uh, come together to build the sukkah, uh, to uh, put the uh, roof on it, and uh, to dwell in it. So, um, and, and along those lines, during the week, we will have a table and chair uh, chairs out here, so that even if you want to come by during the week, uh, or if you happen to be an Orthodox legalist and feel like you have to take one meal each day in the sukkah, we are going to provide that for you. But we really. Uh, try to avoid the trap of legalism. Uh, I was raised in Reformed Judaism. Another way of describing that is no legalism. I mean, it's kind of like you just decide what you want to do that is meaningful for you. Uh, and so um, we kind of buy into that in one way, which is we don't want to feel like we are compelled to do things because it's really a higher calling to serve the Lord because we want to than to feel like we have to. Now, Sukkot, uh, as we've just seen, causes us to deliver the remembrance, uh, to remember the deliverance of our people. Uh, we also find in Zechariah 14, as we uh, read earlier, that not only will the Jewish people observe Sukkot after the return of Messiah, but according to Zechariah 14, verse 16, after Messiah's return, everyone who is left of the nations will come to worship the king. Adonai Sivao. Okay, we're going to work on that one because I hear it mispronounced an awful lot uh, <clears throat> amongst those who see a TS or a TZ and go into a state of panic. Um, anybody back there I should know about? Okay. Uh, just a spider. Okay. <clears throat> Where? Oh, Adonai Sivao. The Lord of hosts or the Lord of armies. So uh, it's Tsevao. Uh, Sava is army. Tsevao is army. So uh, Adonai is the uh, covenant name of the Lord represented by the Yud He, Bav He, the four uh, Hebrew letters, uh, sometimes referred to as the Tetragrammaton, um, that we don't uh, pronounce by the way those letters sound. Uh, because we don't know exactly how to pronounce that word, uh, certainly anymore uh, at this point, um, we substitute the Jewish people substitute Adonai. So we're going to say on three Adonai Sivao. One, two, three. Adonai Sivao. Okay, I expect to hear that. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <clears throat> we worked on Yitzchak. Remember that during uh, the Feast of uh, Trumpets. Uh, and so we'll, I'm trying to think what my third one is, my uh, pet peeves. But I have to tell you, people complain that I don't pronounce Ruach HaKodesh right. Somehow I get the accent on the wrong syllable. syllable. And so um, <coughs> we just uh, keep going with it um, and trust that uh, we have a lot of grace in the Lord and we need to show grace to one another. Um, <coughs> uh, they will have to come and... and in my mind, this is one of the reasons that we observe Sukkot as a rehearsal, because we know that Sukkot is going to be, be observed according to Zechariah uh, 14, according to the prophet Zechariah, um, whose name means God remembers. We are going to be observing uh, Sukkot uh, at some point in the future in Jerusalem, worshiping the king who has come to reign uh, over this world. Zechariah uh, 14 verse 17 tells us that those from the nations who do not come to Jerusalem at Sukkot to worship the Jewish Messiah will not have water for their crops. So um, <clears throat> we see that Sukkot will be observed not only by God's people but required by those who were hostile to God's people. But they will uh, have to observe Sukkot in order to survive, in order to have the water that they need in their lands for their crops. In Leviticus 23, the instructions concerning Sukkot and all of the appointed times, for that matter, are given in the plural. Uh, this can be difficult to see in the English translations that use you 
for both singular and plural. And uh, our liturgy this evening uh, came from the Jewish Bible that I had growing up. Uh, and the King James is this way as well. It says ye, and that means uh, in the South we would say you all. Okay, that, That's the idea that it has. It's the plural of, of you. Um, in, in the singular, it, it'll still say you. So whenever you see ye, you, you are seeing a, a community statement. Now the Hebrew re reflect it, it, you can tell immediately whether it's in the singular or the plural, but uh, in many English translations, including the Congregational Bible that uh, we've used for many years, uh, that was put together by Dr. David Stern, uh, even the uh, New Testament he uh, translated, um, has been a tremendous uh, blessing to the Messianic movement um, for years and years. And we just recently came out with a new translation, uh, the um, Tree of Life uh, version or translation, and um, that one was uh, involved a number of Messianic leaders. But the reason I mentioned the version that we use, Dr. David Stern, is he actually uh, passed away, went to his eternal glory yesterday. Uh, and he has been a tremendous blessing to this movement uh, in a number of ways, the Congregational Bible that uh, we use, and he's also uh, just really, um, I uh, have taken a course from him at one point, and I've also fellowshiped uh, with him at, at the conference before, and so uh, we will certainly miss him, and our movement uh, is uh, sadder, at the loss, but I trust that his memory will be a blessing uh, for those who knew him. Okay, so we were talking about uh, the plural, which uh, Dr. Stern in his translation wanted it to be an easy to read translation, and that's one of the reasons he did not indicate the plural of the Hebrew. Uh, but since he's lived in Israel for a number of years, I think he can uh, is able to tell the difference. So. The whole point to all of this is we are to observe these appointed times as a community. Um, it would be something that we would take from the idea that all of the uh, descriptions are given in the plural, speaking to the Jewish people as a community, although in Deuteronomy 16, similar type instructions, uh, you are to rejoice and things like that are in the singular. Um, so there is also an individual aspect to uh, this observance as well. And in a similar fashion, we observe each of these special times on specific days throughout the year, but these divine appointments are also part of a group of seven, uh, as specified sequentially in Leviticus 23. So it may be that our fullest understanding really comes after we've observed the entire cycle. Uh, and the way it has been established by the Lord, we get to observe this cycle year after year, uh, generation after generation. So uh, our uh, understanding can continue uh, to increase each time. But I, I really think we see a, a, a picture uh, as we put all of these appointed times together, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a bit. Another thing that we find in Leviticus 23 is uh, sometimes people refer to these instead of appointed times, sometimes they're called the feasts of the Lord. But the reality is some of the appointed times in Leviticus 23, including the Day of Atonement, a day when we fast uh, in our observance, aren't really uh, described as feasts. But uh, the harvest festivals are described using the term feast. The Hebrew word is chag. You have to get the throat involved. Chag, not hog, uh, because hog is not kosher, right? One of my feast favorite jokes. Uh, fortunately, there are some who laugh even though they know it's coming. But Sukkot is indeed referred to as a feast. Chag ha Sukkot. Uh, a sukkah is a single temporary shelter or booth. Sukkot is the plural. And the greeting used on this day, as you've already heard, is Chag Sukkot Sameach, or generally Chag Sameach, if you don't want to keep up with which festival we're observing, um, <clears throat> meaning happy uh, festival. 
Sukkot is actually the last of the three annual harvest, harvest festivals for the year. Okay, a little bit of a review. The first harvest festival is called Chag Hamatzot, uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when the first fruits of the barley harvest were to be brought to the priest. And the second harvest festival occurs seven weeks later and is called Chag HaShavuot, uh, the Feast of Weeks, when the first fruits of the wheat harvest were to be brought to the priest. Now, barley and wheat are two of the seven species, according to Deuteronomy 8, verse 8, that are found in the land of promise. And according to tradition, the first fruits of the other five species, grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives, and honey, were brought to the priest at Chag Hasakot, the Feast of Tabernacles, for the final offering of the year. Another tradition associated with Sukkot is called Ush Pizim. Uh, it's an Aramaic word that means guests. It's the idea of hospitality as we invite friends and neighbors to join us in the sukkah and as we invite the heroes of our faith uh, into our sukkah by reading passages or doing skits or crafts or drawings associated with their stories. The first night, it's Abraham, followed by Isaac, then Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Aaron, and David, on successive nights. Now, uh, I have some pictures of Sukkot that we have built through the years. Uh, this was our very first one, kind of a lean-to. Uh, go ahead. Um, some younger people there observing. The uh, blankets are helpful in knocking down the wind because it can get kind of cool in the evening. And then this is the congreg mm -hmm. the sukkah that we used to put up in front of the congregation uh, before we built this one. And you could see we couldn't get all the people in it, so um, eventually we expanded in size to this one. Right now, we are in the middle of the seventh month on the Hebrew calendar, based on Exodus 12, verse 2, which designates the first month as being the month of Passover. So Tishrei always begins with the seventh new moon of the year, which was two weeks ago. On that day, in accordance with Leviticus 23, verse 24, we sounded the shofar as we observed the fifth of the seven annual appointed times of Leviticus 23. Now, I say we sounded. The reality is Jeremy sounded the shofar. He's our Baal Takiyah, as we say, uh, meaning he's a really good shofar blower. And most of us uh, just try to get a decent sound out of it. Uh, five days ago, we observed Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, a day when the Lord instructs us in Leviticus 23, verse 27, that we are to afflict our souls. Uh, a day during Taber... Uh, uh, let me read that. Oh, a day during tabernacle and temple times when the nation of Israel would obtain atonement for national sins through a ritual described in Leviticus chapter 16. Because the seven-day observance of Sukkot begins on the 15th of Tishrei, according to Leviticus 23, verse 34, it's always at the time of a full moon. I don't know, it's got a little bit... Oh yeah, I see a full moon out there. Anybody else see it? You can look to your left... And uh, it's there in all its glory. So it's always kind of neat when the moon plays along with our plans. Um, <clears throat> at this time, we celebrate the bounty of God's provision for the past year. As believers, we can also celebrate the Lord's ultimate provision, the sacrifice of His Son, Messiah Yeshua, uh, as the way of our being seen as righteous in God's sight. Because we know that our righteousness in the Hebrew Scriptures uh, in Isaiah are described as being like filthy rags because we are unable to achieve righteousness by our own efforts. Uh, we do things often that we... Uh, it, it doesn't take much to figure out our wholly unrighteous. Uh, we treat people poorly. Uh, we say bad things about people. We tell the rabbi that that was a lousy message. No, I'm kidding. Um, <clears throat> but but it, the reality is we're, we're trapped by our selfishness, our flesh, 
uh, and our fallen nature. So we could not save ourselves, so God had to provide the way of salvation. Uh, and that's really kind of laid out, uh, as we've talked about through the High Holy Days, uh, in uh, Isaiah 53 and the role of the suffering servant. So, uh, at this time, we also ask the Lord to provide the rains that we need in the coming year. What are called uh, in Israel and in the scriptures, the former and the latter rains. We ask the Lord at this time to bless us with the rain that we need in the right amounts and at the right times, which means after Sukkot is over, uh, or at least not during our Sukkot picnic. Uh, and I've checked the weather app and it's looking pretty good so far. So we have much to be joyful about at this time of year. Amen? Amen. Yet my experience growing up in a Reformed Jewish family is that this observance uh, is really not practiced in any significant way by most Jewish people. Uh, while many observant Jews build a sukkah or they purchase a tent like dwelling for this time, uh, my only recollection of it growing up in a Reformed synagogue was uh, one Shabbat, I happened to be uh, at the synagogue for the Sabbath service um, during Sukkot, which I'm not even sure I knew that that's what it was, but I saw this uh, trellis-like uh, um, wooden structure uh, that uh, was in the foyer outside the sanctuary, uh, kind of like a, a wooden jungle gym uh, with some branches and fruit on it, and uh, I was told, you know, that, that we had built that because it was Sukkot. None of my extended family ever observed uh, this festival in any way that I can recall. In Leviticus 21, verse 39, we're told that Sukkot is to be observed for seven days. But it also says that we're to have a Sabbath on the first and the eighth day. We've already read uh, that verse together, and we had it read to us as well. Um, how can there be an eighth day in a seven-day festival? Uh, the correct answer is Anilo Yodea. Uh, I'm not going to try, I don't know, I'm not going to try and explain that, other than to say um, that there were offerings which each of the, for each of the days of Sukkot, uh, described in Numbers chapter 29, and we also um, find instructions for this, uh, a, a special offering for this eighth day in Numbers 29. It's called Yom Shemini Atzeret, which means uh, the eighth day assembly. And the rabbis uh, so much enjoyed the eighth day, they've added a ninth day. Uh, by a tradition, or, or according to tradition, they've added the day of Simchat Torah. Uh, as we rewind the Torah scroll from the end of Deuteronomy, to the beginning of Genesis so that we can start our annual cycle of readings all over again. Now in Israel, both of these days are observed on the eighth day of Sukkot, and that's exactly how we're going to do it here next Sunday night uh, after the picnic. The branches to be used in Sukkot construction are specified in Leviticus 23 and Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8. Leviticus 23 verse 40 says to use the fruit of goodly trees, palm fronds, thick branches, and willows of the brook. In Nehemiah 8.15, the people were told to use olive, pine, it literally says an oily tree, uh, H. Shemin, uh, myrtle, palm, and thick branches. So uh, we have all of those types of uh, branches in our roof of our sukkah, but um, Jewish people see that as being accomplished through the lulav and the etrog, and they actually um, refer to them as the four species. Uh, the uh, in um, uh, well, that's right. We'll just keep, uh, 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 like there's seven species in the land, and these are the four species. They've concluded uh, that the fruit of goodly trees is the citron or the etrog uh, in the Hebrew because it is a fruit that tastes like the tree that it comes from. I don't know. I've ever, never eaten that trog. Anybody <laughs> dined on the delicacy? No, okay. Um, if ours ever ripens, we'll give you the opportunity. Um, <clears throat> at, at some point, hopefully, it will be a bright yellow, but it may be by Hanukkah or so that that um, happens. 
Okay, so um, <clears throat> the uh, lulav is to be waved in a specific way, holding the etrog, and I'm sure I won't hold it right, because as I said, I wasn't, yeah. we did not have do this, although I knew about the lulav, I'm sure they mentioned it in the synagogue, and probably the etrog too, but we, but, um, we use it uh, and move it in certain directions to represent the Lord as being over us in all these directions. So we shake it to the east, the south, and then the west, and then the north, and then up, and then down. Uh, some just point the lulav, others turn their bodies as well. Um, and so uh, this is just an idea that we are asking the Lord to be our covering, to surround us. Uh, to watch over and protect us um, and acknowledging that uh, he is everywhere. The rabbis also tell us that a sukkah is to be a temporary structure. It's not to be too sturdy, um, but you also have to be sure that it's not too flimsy uh, as sometimes you can learn the hard way. Uh, as we have a picture here uh, that shows one year we had a storm come through and uh, the next thing we knew when we went out, the next day we had discovered that our sukkah had collapsed. Um, <clears throat> but most years it's been sturdy enough to avoid that happening. Although one year we had uh, tents, the kids would tend to, to sleep out in tents uh, next to the sukkah. And uh, one year it poured rain at night and the tent uh, got more and more water on its top till the tent finally collapsed. Uh, and so we brought in all the soaking wet children uh, and dogs uh, and wives and uh, <clears throat> dried them off and uh, learned that uh, it helps us to remember that our people really needed to have shelter when they were in the wilderness and that it was a blessing of the Lord uh, to provide for them and also to tell them this is just your temporary state. One day you'll be uh, in the land of promise and you will be um, able to experience that blessing. The rabbis also specify that the roof is to be built out of natural materials and is supposed to provide more shade than sun but you're supposed to be able to see the stars at night through it and generally we have enough lights on that you probably can't see the stars through it but if we turn the lights off and if the stars are out there you could probably see them. So, um, <clears throat> All you have to do is step outside the sukkah later and you'll be able to tell that that is in fact the case. Um, <clears throat> one of the reasons for that is to associate this temporary structure with our existence in this world. Our life on this earth is uh, very short compared to all of eternity. Uh, we could describe it as the blink of an eye, the snap of a finger uh, by comparison. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, uh, similar to the way we uh, sang earlier in the song by uh, Sue Samuel, uh, our bodies are referred to as tabernacles. And 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53 tells us that one day our mortal bodies will become immortal, that our natural bodies will one day be replaced by glorified bodies. Um, our natural bodies are decaying as we grow older. I probably don't have to tell you that. But one day there will be no more tears, no more suffering, no more pain, uh, and we will have uh, glorified bodies. Once again, nothing that we've done to deserve that. That's just the grace of our Creator. Yeshua also used this feast to reveal truths about who He is. John 7 verse 37 says that from the New Covenant Scriptures, it was on the last day of the feast, the great day, which is traditionally called Hoshana Rabbah, uh, which means the great salvation, which was when the priests would go down to the pool of Siloam and bring back water and pitchers for a water pouring ceremony in the temple. They would recite the Hallel, uh, including Psalm 118, verse 25, which says uh, in the Hebrew, Ana Adonai, Hoshia Na, Ana Adonai, Hatzlicha Na, Save us, Lord, prosper us, Lord. Then they say in the next verse, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Beseeching the Lord, asking the Lord to send the Messiah. Keep in mind 
Yeshua told the Jewish leaders of his time in Matthew 23 verse 39, you will not see me again until you say, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And I think we'll uh, read a, a little bit more from Zechariah 14 in just a minute, and we'll see why it would make sense that our Jewish people will cry out uh, for Messiah to save them, uh, because uh, I think that they're going to come to a time, uh, according to the prophet Zechariah, when uh, that is their only hope. After circ Back to the water pouring cer ceremony. After circling the altar seven times, they would pour the water into a vessel next to a vessel uh, that had wine in it. Uh, and it was at this time, according to John 7, verse 2, that Yeshua stood up and proclaimed, in John 7, verse 37, If anyone is thirsty, let him keep coming to me and drinking. In John 7, 38, he says, Whoever puts his trust in me, as the scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from his inmost being. And in John 7, 39, we're told that Yeshua was talking about the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, which had not yet been given. Also at this time, there were 75-foot lampstands surrounding the temple. And I think uh, that description comes from either Josephus or the Talmud. So uh, the entire temple compound uh, would be lit up in a spectacular way uh, during the festival of Sukkot. And this is likely what Yeshua wanted the people to think about when he said in John 8 verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light which gives life. The sukkah also reminds us of the temporal nature of our homes. Yeshua told us in John uh, chapter 14 verses 2 and 3 that when he went away, he would prepare a place for us to dwell. Not talking about an earthly home, but a dwelling place for us for the rest of eternity after we die in a uh, place that he is preparing. Dwelling in the sukkah reminds us of the blessing that we enjoy living in homes with heat and air conditioning and plumbing for the rest of the year. Can I get a hallelujah for that stuff? Hallelujah. Uh, <clears throat> it's easy to take it for granted till you spend some time uh, out in the cold or in the heat of the day building the sukkah and you realize um, that these are things that we should be thankful for, but we've had it, most of us, our entire lives to the point that we completely take it for granted. The sukkah also reminds us that we are just temporary residents of this world, strangers and pilgrims passing through, looking forward to entering the promised land, looking forward to a future dwelling place not made with human hands, the promise that as believers we can spend the rest of eternity in the presence of our cre Creator. Also, I mentioned just a moment ago, Zechariah 14. That chapter, that prophecy from the uh, prophet Zechariah talks about a final battle between the Jewish people and those who oppose them and the Lord. Uh, in Zechariah 14, verse 2, it says, All the nations will come against Jerusalem. And just when things are looking like Israel's defeat uh, at the hands of her enemies is seemingly inevitable, if we were to look up, we would see lightning flash across the sky. We would hear the sound of a trumpet. And then Messiah will set his feet down on the Mount of Olives. And Israel will once again be delivered for the very last time out of the hands of those who sought her destruction. The Lord also tells us through the prophet Amos in Amos 9, 11, and 14 as we sang earlier. I will raise up the fallen sukkah of David, the fallen tabernacle of David. He will reestablish the kingdom of David. I will bring back from captivity my people Israel, and they shall build cities and, and inhabit them. Today we say, duh, but those words have been in existence for thousands of years, and it didn't seem possible in any way. And yet uh, we have seen uh, Israel be reestablished as a nation, and the people come back into land that was thought inhabitable. Uh, and now... Um, the cities are a, a blessing. Uh, it says, And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine and plant gardens and eat the fruit. And Amos 9.15 says, They will no more be uprooted. Thank you, Lord. Uh, yes, I'm very thankful for that. Because otherwise, whenever war breaks out, I'd be worried. 
but um, the Lord has already said that once he planted them back in the land, they were not going to be uprooted. So uh, I trust that that will... Um, it takes a lot of anxiety away when... I mean, we're still concerned when we see war break out, uh, particularly when we see terrorist acts against women and children, and we see uh, Iran threatening uh, our Jewish people, but uh, and and of course they have enemies all around them that uh, at times uh, supposedly they have peace treaties with Jordan um, and Egypt, but um, and even recently some other Arab nations. But uh, nonetheless, they've also lined up against them in the past, and according to Zechariah 14, uh, they're going to uh, line up against them in the future. We've talked a lot about the seven appointed times of Leviticus 23 this evening. We see the first four as having already been fulfilled uh, by Yeshua at the time of their observance. On Passover, he was executed as the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. He was entombed during unleavened bread. Also, leaven can represent sin in the scriptures. And according to 2 Corinthians 5.21, he lived a life without sin, so he was effectively unleavened. He was raised on the day that was designated as the first fruits offering for the barley harvest. He became our first fruits offering, the first fruits of those who have slept, uh, the first uh, fruits of resurrection. He sent the Spirit, as recounted in Acts chapter 2, on the exact day that Shavuot was observed. So as we see that uh, the first four appointed times uh, we feel very clearly uh, are connected to Yeshua's uh, first coming as well as the sending of the Spirit. The final three times are essentially Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. And 1 Thessalonians 4 from the New Covenant Scriptures talks about uh, Messiah's coming being accompanied by a blast on the trumpet, uh, which would fit in with Rosh Hashanah. 1 Corinthians 15 speaks of a resurrection that will take place uh, at his return when the final trumpet is sounded. And that actually uh, seems consistent with Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 from the Hebrew Scriptures, which tells us uh, that those who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting abhorrence. And once again, that's the translation from the Jewish Bible that I had growing up. Yom Kippur could be associated uh, with a, this final judgment uh, that we find in Daniel ch chapter 12 verse 2 that determines who receives eternal life. And of course we believe that there is only uh, one way that we can achieve eternal life that will be determined at this final judgment and that is those who have truly made a decision to follow uh, Yeshua, to accept the Jewish Messiah uh, as um, the sacrifice that uh, brings forgiveness for their sins. Regarding fulfillment of Sukkot, some see events described in the book of Revelation as being uh, his fulfillment of Sukkot. Revelation 19 verses 7 through 9 say, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Normally, the motif uh, of the wife uh, represents the body of believers. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Or it could be fulfilled in Revelation 21, where we see what things will be like here on earth at the end of the age. The old heavens and the old earth are gone. The new Jerusalem is descending from the heavens. And in Revelation 21, verse 3, John hears a great voice out of the heavens saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Uh, that is the ultimate covenant promise of the Lord uh, given to the Jewish people, and in Revelation uh, including all those who would call upon Messiah Yeshua for, um, as the sacrifice that brings forgiveness for their sins. We know that uh, we're just beginning to see the first fruits of Jewish people believing that in terms of Messianic Jewish believers. But as we said earlier, 
uh, when uh, events occur in such a way that all the world is ready to destroy Israel, uh, they will cry out for Messiah, and uh, they will acknowledge him as Messiah, saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Also, Zechariah um, chapter 12, verse 10, uh, talks about that as well, about uh, they will look upon him whom they have pierced and mourn as one mourns for an only son. Tonight we've discussed the meaning of Sukkot with regard to the past. Our people had the glory of the Lord dwelling in their midst in the tabernacle and in the temple. When Yeshua came, they had the Son of God dwelling in their midst. And now today we as believers have his spirit dwelling within us. As 1 Corinthians 3.16 says that we have become the temple of God, the dwelling place of, the Holy, of, of his spirit. But there is more blessing to come. We are looking forward to a glorious future when we will be dwelling in the new Jerusalem as the Lord will reign from his throne in Jerusalem forevermore. And all who have called upon Yeshua as their Messiah will be able to enter the holy city, the new Jerusalem, and spend the rest of eternity dwelling in the presence of our holy and righteous creator. As we stress all the time, there's only one way to gain entrance to the new Jerusalem. And that's uh, to accept the sacrifice of Messiah. We can't be good enough by our own uh, efforts to uh, merit entrance. We all fall, fall short of God's standard of righteousness. But as our loving Heavenly Father, uh, He wants only what is best for us. So we will give the opportunity as we do uh, every time, pretty much every time we come together for a service, uh, with every head bowed and every eye closed. This is an opportunity for someone who is here who may not have made uh, a decision to accept Messiah Yeshua's sacrifice on their behalf. You may not have realized uh, that the Jewish Messiah uh, it came for you and uh, for the Jewish people as well. Uh, came for those who aren't Jewish. It was always a part of God's plan uh, that the Jewish people would be a demonstration to the rest of the world uh, of the faithfulness of God of what uh, experiencing salvation means. And as a people, our Jewish people are saved. That's a community statement. Uh, the Lord has been faithful to them. But individually, uh, the only way of salvation, uh, as Yeshua said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father uh, except by me. The ultimate demonstration of the love of our Father was allowing his innocent righteous son to be sacrificed because of what because of our rebellion against our creator this sukkah is temporary but the kingdom of heaven will last forever the new jerusalem will be eternal so if you've never accepted messiah's sacrifice on your behalf before but you would like to right now all you have to do is just raise your hand and you could put it right back down is there anyone we always give this opportunity to, uh, because frequently we've had people who have even been coming for a while, but they realize that they need to make uh, that commitment. They need to uh, ask the Lord to provide uh, Yeshua as their sacrifice. Lord, as we dwell in your presence, we look forward to the day that you were ta will tabernacle in the midst of your people once again, that you will fil fulfill the promise in the final covenant renewal when you said, that you will be that uh, our Jewish people will be your people, and that you will be their God uh, once again, Lord. That you prophesied that in uh, Jeremiah chapter thirty-one through the uh, prophet Jeremiah. We look forward to the day when we will worship our King Messiah Yeshua, when we will observe the Feast of Tabernacles uh, in Jerusalem and acknowledge Him as King forever. Lord, help us to better understand your truths. We don't fully understand how all that is going to happen. Uh, we could spend all night debating it, but the reality is we know in your revelation that you have said that these things will come to pass. And uh, we just look forward to the day when uh, there is no longer suffering, no longer pain, no longer tears, uh, and when the kingdoms of this world uh, are ruled by the kingdoms of the Son that you said you would establish on your holy hill, uh, Mount Zion in Jerusalem. 
Lord, we thank you for all of the many blessings in our lives. We ask you to uh, help us to uh, better understand your love for us so that we might better be able uh, to bring the message of your unconditional love to a world that so desperately needs to hear it. We thank you for the blessings that we enjoy in this nation, the blessings that we enjoy in our congregation serving you. We ask you to continue to bless uh, each and every one who is here, uh, our families, and all that we do. As we say to you this night, Lord, not our will, but your will be done. We say to you, that, to you this night, we love you because you first loved us. And we ask you to help us to overcome our uh, old nature so that we might be uh, closer to the spotless bride that uh, we will one day be a part of as we look forward to your soon return. And we ask you to bless our observance of this feast this night and in the days ahead. And we ask these things in our Messiah Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Remember our regular Sabbath service this coming Friday. Uh, as I mentioned, you can dwell in the sukkah during the week. Next Sunday, uh, our picnic starting at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, followed by our Shemeniat Seret Simchat Torah service in the sanctuary uh, at 7.30. If you're unable to make the picnic, we would still love to have you join us uh, for the eighth-day assembly that uh, we are instructed to observe uh, as an assembly, as a community. Uh, now I'm going to call up our cantor back up uh, to pronounce the blessings over the fruit of the vine and the bread uh, as we um, conclude our service with these blessings and then we will have our closing song. It will be the holiday Adonolam. Baruch Eloheinu melech Bore pari hagafin. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. Amen. I say lachayim, which means to life. Okay, I don't have to explain. Y'all know it already. <laughs> Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, hamozi lechem min haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread and all that are food from the earth. Amen. Amen. And now I would ask you all to please stand. <clears throat> as we will pronounce the blessing found in Numbers chapter 6, the Lord's words of blessing that he instructed Moses uh, to have his brother Aharon Aaron, the first high priest, pronounce these words of blessing uh, as his blessing over his people, uh, his chosen people. So uh, as the people of God, the children of the Lord, we encourage you to stand and receive uh, his words of blessing this evening. Yevarech Adonai Vayishmarecha Yair Adonai Panavalecha Vechunecha Yasah Adonai Panavalecha Vyasenlecha Shalom The Lord bless you and keep you the Lord calls His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and may He grant unto you His peace. Amen. Uh, and I, I would like to thank uh, Jeremy for all his help in our service this evening, for uh, Eli doing the PowerPoint, our singers, uh, our cantor, our leaders, um, everybody who had a part uh, in putting our service together this evening. And now we will uh, sing the holiday Adon Olam. Adon Olam, 
Shalom, Leit Nasa, Vahed Soko, Azai Malek Shemoni Kra, Adon Olam, Adon Olam, Adon Olam, Asher Malak, Asher Malak, Adarim Kol, Yisir Nebra, Leit Nasa, Leit Nasa, Azai Malek Shemoni Kra, Adon Olam, you all. Thank you all for coming. Chag Sameer. Enjoy the time.